Welcome back to Lesson Mentor. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can take this plain shoe from basic to beautiful. To get started, you will need to download this document by clicking the link in the description that will allow you access to this free image so that you can then open it in Photoshop. You will also need to locate an image that you would like to use within your design. A common website to use is called unsplash.com. If you are on a school computer, this may be blocked at your school. If you can get on to Unsplash, you can search for patterns for this, or you can search for some other image you'd like to use for your design. All you'll need to do is then drag and drop that image into Photoshop to open it. You can also drag and drop from Google Images. In case you're not able to use an image that you locate on the internet, I have provided for you a free image that you can use. Just click the link in the description to download it. And you can use this one with no copyright issues. That's free from me to you. Once you have your image in your design, you can accept the position of it and we can still work with it. Use your move tool to move your image and make sure your show transform control box is checked. That will allow you to make your image larger or smaller. For now, I'm going to hide this image by turning off the visibility so that I can work with my Air Force One. It is likely that your image is locked or your layer for your shoe is locked. You can unlock that by clicking the lock icon. What we'll do is use our first tool, which will be our magic wand tool. If your toolbar doesn't look like mine, it might be set to the double toolbar. The magic wand tool is loaded here on the double toolbar, or you might see a different tool could be set to your object selection or your quick selection tool. Just left click and hold it to switch to your magic wand tool. I prefer a single column of tools, so I'm gonna click the arrow and put it back to a single column, and yours would look like this. With the magic wand tool, and I'm on my shoe layer, I'm going to click the panel behind the Nike check. As you can see, I have selected this area because the magic wand tool works on color. So if I click on the white part, it's going to select all of the white part for me. Once that is selected and my layer is unlocked, I can press delete on my keyboard to remove that section. If you get this same error that says you could not complete the request because the smart object is not directly editable, what we need to do is go to our layer. And as you can see, this little icon here means that these are smart objects, which is not going to let us do the technique that we want to do without rasterizing this layer and making it fully readable for Photoshop. So you need to bring up your options by right clicking on the outer area of your layer, this part out here, right click with your mouse and go to rasterize layer. And since I see this icon is also on my image that I'm going to use, I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize that one as well. Just right click on the layer and go to rasterize layer. So if you deselected this area or clicked off, just use your magic wand tool to click in there and now press delete on your keyboard. Now that section is gone. Now I want to deselect it or to stop the selection. I can use my contextual taskbar to click deselect or on my keyboard, I could hold command and the letter D on a Mac keyboard or on a Windows keyboard control and the letter D for deselect, not to be confused with delete. Okay, so if I turn the visibility back on of my image, we see that it's sitting on top of my shoe, but that's because I need to reorder my layer. I can also stretch this image out to cover the transparent parts or I would have to do something else with that section of the shoe. So using my move tool, I'll go ahead and stretch this out as far as I want it to go to cover the hole on my shoe. Once I'm done, I can accept the position, but now I need to reorder my layer so that my image is underneath the shoe layer. So I will left click and hold my pattern and drag it underneath my shoe layer. Now it gives the illusion that it is in the shoe, but because it's on its own layer, I can adjust that up or down. I can use my keyboard and my arrow keys to make small adjustments, or I can use my mouse to adjust it the way that I want.
And as I'm working with the shoe, if I need to make any adjustments, I can still do so. So for the basic level of the shoe, we could just go ahead and use our paint bucket tool to drop in the colors that you would like to use in your design. The only warning that I will give is to be very careful with the color black because once you use black and you try to use a different color on your shoe, and I'll show you, I'll click my shoe layer, I'll drop in using my paint bucket tool, which if you don't see that on your toolbar, it's hiding underneath your gradient tool. Pick the one in the middle to get to your paint bucket tool. And if I drop the color black in and I start painting everything black and I go, wait a minute, I wanna change the color, then I'm just gonna pick a random color here and click okay. Now it's changing all of that and I've lost the definition around my shoe because it's initially black. So anything that black touches, now it's gonna change all of that section. So be very committed to black if you are going to use it and know exactly where you want to put it because it's very difficult to change it later in the process. So I'm gonna go back and undo that. So command or control and the letter Z like zebra to undo or go back. And I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna use two different colors of red to do my shoe so that I can add the color. You can choose the colors that you would like to do for your shoe as well, but if you'd like to use the colors that I am using, I will show you the color codes for that. Opening my foreground color in this box down at the bottom, if you'd like to use the red, the dark red from the example, you'll just type in this color code and click OK. And because I already know the other color I'd like to use, I can use the little arrow in the corner to switch my foreground and my background color or press the letter X on my keyboard for the keyboard shortcut and set my color to the lighter color red using the call number here. Once I have that, I'll click OK. So now I'm just going to drop in the colors and get it the way that I want. And when I'm done with this, I'll be finished with the most basic level of completing the shoe. If you'd like to see how to make it a little bit more advanced, keep watching. To zoom in or out, I can hold down Command and the plus sign if you're on a Mac or Control and the plus sign if you're on a Windows computer. Dresses, going all to different places, different planets. Watch your aura pass me by, losing balance. What if we were out of time and second chances? Empty handed. You like to pass out. You like to drive, get down dirt. Like, 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 Because I know exactly where I want black to go on my shoe, I'm going to go ahead and put that on my shoe. It's up to you whether you use black or not. Here's a bonus tool that I'll use in this design because I want to pick up a color that I've already used, but my foreground and background colors are now changed to black and white. I can grab my eyedropper tool and pick up another color that's already in my design so that I can use that. Back to my paint bucket. Now for these little pieces that might be missed, the attention to detail is important. I'll switch to my brush tool, which is located here, so that I can get into the little small spots that I want to make sure are covered up. You don't want any unnecessary white spaces that take away or detract from your design. And because Photoshop is a pixel-based application, if I zoom in far enough, I can get down to the smallest pixel to make sure that I have all of the little parts covered that need to be. Wow. 
once the shoe looks the way that you want, this is the completion of the most basic type of shoe you could do to add a design into your shoe using just a few tools. You could make all the necessary adjustments that you need and you could end there. But if you'd like to make it a little bit more advanced, keep watching and let's add a gradient to your shoe. So we'll add a gradient to the shoe and I'll also show you later how to step it up even more to enhance your Nike check with an image if your image that you've chosen doesn't quite work with the Nike check. So keep watching and I'll walk you right through it. So to work with the gradient, then I want to reload my foreground and my background color with the colors that I had previously. So I'm going to change my background color to the light red color using my eyedropper tool or I could retype in my hex number and click OK. Then I need to switch to my gradient tool which is also located on the same panel as the paint bucket and go to gradient. Now you can see that my foreground and my background colors are set for my gradient. If yours doesn't look like this, all you'll need to do is open your drop down box Go to your basics folder and you'll see the colors that are set for your foreground and background colors. So if you want to change it, just change your foreground and your background color and you'll see it in your basics menu. If you don't know what colors you want, Photoshop has some default colors set for you in these different folders that you can look through and choose a gradient that works for your shoe design. So now I just want to add a gradient, but I need to define where I want the gradient to go. I'll go back to my magic wand tool, make sure I have my shoe layer selected, and select the area where I want to add a gradient. I like working in smaller sections, so I'm just going to click down here at the bottom, switch back to my gradient tool, and drop the gradient in. Because I want my gradient to go from light to dark, I could click this box to reverse it here, or I could switch my foreground and my background colors so that the darker colors in front. Mine is set to a linear gradient, and I'm gonna uncheck this box so that mine now goes from dark to light. And as I drag out my gradient, I can stretch it to see what it will look like when I let go. I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna switch back to my Air Force One shoe layer so that I can continue adding the gradients in. So now that I have the bottom section completed, I want to add a gradient to the back panel. So I'm gonna go back to my magic wand, click on the area where I want to add the gradient, and if I want to add multiple areas, I can hold shift on my keyboard so that I can add to my gradient selection and I want it to run through this entire area. So when I let go of shift, go back to my gradient tool. Now it's going to stretch into all of those panels and I can adjust the gradient the way that I want. I like the way that's working out. Back to my shoe layer and I can decide if I want to add more gradient to my design. So I will select, again, my shoe layer, go to my magic wand, I'm gonna click the front of my shoe, go back to my gradient, and stretch it from front to back here. When I let go, you also have the stop that you can adjust more or less if you need to, get more precise on your gradient. I like how that looks, so I'm ready to go on and I'll do this panel as well, so back to my shoe, back to my magic wand, I'm gonna select this area, back to my gradient, and I'm gonna stretch it forward. And I could see what it looked like if I reverse it or go the other way. I kinda like how that's working out. And I want to add it to the shoelaces as well. So I will zoom in, go back to my shoe layer, go back to my wand, click on the area I want to place the gradient, go back to the gradient, and I want it to go from light to dark for this area. So I'm going to reverse it here and just stretch it out 
and get it the way that I want. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of my laces just like that and be right back with you. All right, so this is if you wanted to make it a little bit more than basic. Done. If you'd like to see how to make this a little bit more advanced, keep watching. So now that I have the shoe and I want to give it a little bit of depth, kind of look kind of cool since it is an illustration, I can do whatever I want with this. I want to add an effect, which will be a drop shadow. And I'm going to add a pattern to my Nike check. So this could also happen if you have an image that you want to use where it doesn't quite look right. If the background of the shoe, the image is there, but it's not included in the Nike check. But what I do want is to select the Nike check itself so that I can make a copy of it. So I will use my magic wand tool to select this area. So with this section selected, I want to duplicate just this section. So I don't want to duplicate the layer. I just want to make a copy of the Nike check and put it on its own layer. So I'm going to copy and paste. So if you know how to do that with your keyboard, you can use the keyboard shortcut to do so, or you can go up to edit and copy, and edit and paste. Now I have the Nike check on a layer by itself. And I'm just going to click there and call it Nike Chuck. Now what I need is a copy of the pattern that I'm using. I don't want my Nike Chuck and my background pattern to be the same sizes. So I'm going to make this pattern a little bit smaller by bringing it down. And I'm going to make it maybe about this big. And then I want to bring out a copy. So there's lots of ways to make another copy of a layer. I could hold option on my keyboard with my move tool and click and drag a copy out. Or I could right click on the layer and go to duplicate layer. That would work as well. Once I have the checkerboard aligned the way that I want, then I'll be ready to move forward. So make your adjustments the way that you need in order to get the effect that you want. Once I have that matched up pretty well and I have a copy of my Nike check on a layer, I need to duplicate a layer again, so or you could drag in a fresh copy. So I'm gonna right click, go to duplicate layer, and I am just making another copy of the pattern. This one, I want to drag up above the copy of the Nike check that I've made. And if I move this over, and I want it to be a little bit larger to cover this area, Now I need to clip this image to my Nike check. So make sure that the Nike check copy is right underneath your pattern or your image. Then I can right click and go to create clipping mask. Now the image is clipped just to the Nike check and why we needed to make a copy of it. So that's pretty cool, but we can add a little bit more depth because again, this is the advanced part of this by adding an effect to the Nike check. So I can click on my Nike check and go to effects and I will open drop shadow. Now I can adjust the size of my shadow by adjusting my sliders until I get the effect that I want. My opacity is at 50% and then I have it set to these numbers for the distance spread and size and my angle is at 30 degrees. So I hit click OK and that looks pretty cool. If I want to step it up one more time, I can go to my Air Force One layer, go back to effects, go back to drop shadow and add a drop shadow to that section as well. 
I have the same settings, so I could have copied that layer style to that layer, but I wanted you to see one more time how you can add an effect. And I can adjust the angle if I need to. And I kind of like it at this angle. Now when I click OK, it has a little bit more depth to it, and I can see the Nike check and my background layer, as well as all of my shading work. Now I'm officially done and have an advanced copy of the Photoshop Air Force One shoe. So if you've made it this far, congratulations, especially if you've never done this before. Have some fun with this, create as many of these as you would like, figure out how you can make it different and add maybe more images or what you need to do to make some other changes to the shoe if you would like. So I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up so that other people can find this tutorial and learn how to go from basic to advanced in no time.